All right, hi folks, Mr. Shindell here. Today we are working on lab 20A, which is electricity. Uh, we're gonna start by building a circuit. So you can see the picture of the circuit, and we're gonna create that in real life over here. What's really neat about this material is, in our setup, is we can take this, we're gonna take these connectors and slide them onto the posts. So our goal for our circuit is to make it look like the picture, and how we do that is we slide these on top of each other, trying to make a circle, a circuit. In this case, we need our battery. We're gonna plug our battery in here, and we're set up just like part one. Now in part two, it says, how can you tell the electric current is flowing? So we're gonna take our switch, close our switch. Something just happened. Obviously, you see it. The next question says, can you see the current? Can you see the electricity? We can see the result of it, but can you actually see that electricity? Moving on, we have some other things here. We're talking about how current is flowing. So if you read those questions and answer them, that would be fantastic. Uh, how does the switch cause the current to stop? When we open up our switch here, you'll see our current has stopped flowing. It is open. That brings us to our next part, which is conductors and insulators, right? A conductor is a material through which electric current flows easily, and an insulator, it does not flow easily. It resists that flow. So what we need to do is figure out what are some common items that are insulators and some that are conductors. How we're gonna do that is we're gonna unhook one of the wires, you can see I've chosen to unhook this one right here. We're gonna try and bridge that gap with our material. Here's our plastic straw. I'm gonna make sure I'm touching this post and very clearly make sure I'm touching this other metal piece. Light doesn't come on. Here's our string. We're gonna repeat the process. Post to piece, nothing. Pen cap. Again, touching metal to metal, but here you can see no light. Here's our paper clip. We're gonna go metal to metal. Ooh. And lastly, we're gonna take our rubber band post to metal. And again, you can see that result. As a reminder, again, if it's a conductor, electricity flows and that light bulb lights. So we're making a table listing the materials as either conductors or insulators talk about the characteristics that are shared by conductors. We only had one, but what did it do to the electricity and the current? What are some characteristics of our insulators? The next part, you're gonna be making a circuit diagram using the codes and drawing what we've measured. Welcome back, folks. Right now, we're looking at measuring voltage of a battery. We know the battery has some energy in it. We need to figure out how much energy it is. So what we do is we take our multimeter, make sure our plugs are plugged in correctly. For this one, our black wire is at the bottom, pressed firmly in. Our red one is connected in the middle. Again, pressed very firmly in. And we're gonna turn our dial to where it reads 20, because we're gonna be measuring from zero to 20 volts. Make sure it's DC, that's our symbol for DC. If you're not sure, ask your teacher. For us, we're gonna take our probes. One goes on one end of the battery, the other goes on the other end, and you can see it's got a reading. If you accidentally reverse them, we'll get the same number but the negative. Ignore the negative for us. All right, the next piece for us is measuring current. So we wanna know how is that flowing? We know something is flowing through here. So we need to take our multimeter so it's set to measure current. We're gonna take our red wire and move it for this one. See how it says A? We're gonna move it to the top spot and push that in very firmly. You might want to double check your picture. Some of the pictures are not quite as perfect as we would like them. There we go. And for us, we need to do something special here. We need to open up this switch. You'll notice the light bulb went out. 
we are going to force the electricity to go through our wires, through our machine, and if everything is working right, we'll get a reading. And in this case, we have point oh, let me see if I can get it in there, point oh 0.09 amps. Notice the light bulb is also lit. The current flowed through our machine and back around in that full circle. And for our last part of our lab here, we are looking at a circuit with a dimmer switch. Dimmer switch also called a potentiometer. For us, we have basically our last setup. Notice the potentiometer is right here. What you'll notice is the light bulb is nice and bright. So for us, we are going to change this potenti potentiometer and measure the voltage across the bulb. Right now it's set in this position. If I measure the voltage across our bulb, now this again is new for us. So we're going to go to one side of the light bulb and to the other side of the light bulb. Again, ignoring the negative or if that bothers you, switch these. Right now we are looking at about 1.41 volts. We have a very bright light bulb. If I turn the potentiometer, so it is dimmer, notice I move the potentiometer here, and I check my voltage across the light bulb. We are at 0.72 volts, and notice the bulb is much, much dimmer.